Okay, go, Brian. So tell us about these flowers and why they're so popular. What are they? Well, these amazing plants are foxgloves. Um, they're a plant which comes from uh, from the Mediterranean area, and as you can see, they grow to these these huge spires at this time of the year. Now, they're a little bit on the special side because they're one of the things that does need a little bit of a cool climate to do extremely well. And in some parts of the world, they actually take two years to flower. In most cases, here in Toowoomba, because we've got a better growing season, they tend to flower uh, in the first season. As you can see, these are only about six or seven months old. Wow, that's amazing. So, and um. How many varieties of these are around of these flowers? Oh, there's literally dozens. In fact, the breeders are now working on some intergenus hybrids. So, uh, as well as the old-fashioned ones, you'll see some more compact ones, and you'll see a much wider range of colours of different types. Mm -hmm. Mate, how important is it? I just see a little bee here. How important is it with bees? They're really important for the plants. Of course, they pollinate the plants, um, and they provide the next generation for them. But they're also really important for the natural environment as well because they provide all the pollination for all of our natural plants and Australia's got the most incredible array of plants and many of them are pollinated either by introduced bees or more importantly by our native bees. So we really do Brian, need to look after them. Brian, rat's tail status, have I got that correct? Um, you have. Very popular in Toowoomba, so tell us um, a bit about them. Oh, it's a bit of a weird and wonderful thing really. You don't see them in too many places. They're an annual status, there are quite a number of different types of status. This particular one grows and dies in one season and then sets its seed. But uh, as you can see, it produces these really rather weird, I guess you'd say they look a little bit like a rat's tail perhaps, um, at this time of the year. They live for a few months and then of course they're going to set the seed and that's going to be the end of that. And how easy is it for people to grow these? Oh, they're pretty easy. You sow the seed in about March, April, sometime around about then, and they grow through the winter months and then they produce their flowers at this time of the year. I might say that uh, as well as the rat's tail status, which if you don't want to grow an annual one, there are quite a number of perennial status, including a pink perennial status, that will grow for many, many years. Um, so if you, know, if you like this look, but perhaps you want something which is a little bit more permanent, there are permanent varieties of status as well. Considering we're in uh, probably one of the worst droughts uh, that we've ever seen, and our dams are at 30%, isn't it amazing how the curators here have created these gardens? How have they done that? Uh, well, they, they do a great job every year, I've got to say, and they've, uh, they have employed some of the best water-wise practices you can get, um, mm -hmm. and that all starts with the soil. Um, I don't know if you've come in here in January or February, you'll see them preparing the soil, in increasing the organic, the organic matter content, so that their soils are much more resilient. And of course, you've still got to grow, use water to grow plants as good as, good as this, mm -hmm. but a large part of it is in choosing the right plants for the right spot, um, and making sure that the timing is right so that you're maximising what water you are using, you're maximising the benefit from it. So for the home gardener, what sort of products should they be using to um, oh. maximise the soil for moisture content? Probably the most important thing is to add organic matter to the soil. So manures mm -hmm. and compost are certainly the best. There are a number of other products you can add, things like biochar and some of the rock minerals, and things will also help with water holding and with the structure of the soil. But number one, what my grandma used to use, use compost. Wow, compost, simple isn't it? It's very simple, it's been around for thousands of years um, and that will certainly help to build up the resilience of your soil and the moisture holding ability of the soil so when you do apply water it doesn't just run through and is lost out through the out through the Brian, soil. Brian, what a, a splash of colours here with ranunculi? Or <laughs> ranunculus, it? whichever ranunculus. way you want to go. Yep. Yeah, amazing plants. Um, they look fantastic at this time of the year. You can see there's such a wide range of bright colours yeah. but you can also get them in pastels yeah. as well. And the thing to, to know about ranunculus is that they do come in a variety of sizes. So if you want these nice dwarf compact ones, you do need to buy compact dwarf varieties. Now, this variety, as you can see, is uh, called uh, Mache Mix, um, which is one of the dwarf growing varieties. But there are heaps of different types, and they'll give you these really vivid colours. i got to say, that I think they also work really well with the yellow tulips that are mixed in with them as well. The tulips are absolutely beautiful. I just took a photo of a white one. So, how many colours of um, tulips are around? Uh, there are literally tens of thousands, tens wow. of thousands of different cultivars. Some of them range from being worth about twenty cents each. Some of them are worth uh, several hundred dollars each. So, uh, yeah, big, a big range of varieties, and new ones coming through each and every year. And tulips are they um, easy to look after and to maintain? The short answer is not really. Um, <laughs> they're a thing, thing which really does need the cool climate. They naturally grow by coming through the snow each year. Um, so you can imagine that in places like Turkey or whatever, in the highlands of Turkey, the tulips come up through the snow. Um, so in a climate in Queensland, we obviously haven't got those conditions at all. So you do need to provide the right conditions, which means putting these bulbs into the fridge for three or four months each year. Okay. 
And the origin of the tulip, it's um, it's, it's a sign of peace. Isn't yeah, they're it? from or Eurasia what, through yeah. Turkey. Um, in fact, um, Turkey has a big tulip festival each April. Um, people think they're from uh, from uh, from the Netherlands because they've always been associated with the Netherlands, but they're actually from 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 across the continent, across into Turkey and into into Eurasia. And again, hundreds of different varieties and tens of thousands of different cultivars, particularly of these big showy ones. Mate. It's all visual, isn't it? The, the sensory to the eyes of the flowers is just beautiful, but what about the smells, the fragrance? Yeah, there's all kinds of things which can bring fragrance to the garden. The, the number of the garden beds have got things like sweet peas or hyacinths, which bring a lot of fragrance. In fact, if you, if you smell carefully, pretty much all of the plants will have some degree of nectar kind of a smell to them. Now, one of the other things which you'll see in quite a few of the gardens is the use of herbs uh, mixed in with the flowers. In this case, we've got parsley, so that's obviously a parsley kind of fragrance. Uh, but you will see things like mint and uh, sage and thyme uh, also used as ornamental plants mixed in. And I, I really like this look where you've got um, a bit of a break between the orange and the yellow uh, with the with the triple curl parsley in through here. And this is just normal parsley which you would use in things like tabbouleh or you use as a garnish. Mate, I want to thank you for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Oh, I know you're a busy man. So, mate, Toowoomba 4358TV, it's more than just a postcode. It's all about community, and thank you. You're such a community-minded person. Love no, it. Love it. Thank you very much, and I hope everyone has a fantastic carnival. Enjoy carnival. Take care. Thanks.